Hey guys, my name's Sam and today we're going to take a look at how to choose the LiPo battery for your next project. So as technology continues to develop and more and more devices are becoming portable, we've got an increased reliance on batteries and we've got these wonderful uh, battery technology known as LiPo, which is short for lithium polymer batteries or lithium ion polymer batteries. We're gonna stick with LiPo today. So there's a few different things we need to understand and if you're not sure uh, what LiPos are or how to integrate them with your projects, then we've got some separate tutorials on those for using LiPos in your projects and some uh, charges and products that are gonna help you use those. But today we're going to take a look at some of the specifications and key points to look for when you're, when you're choosing uh, a battery for your next project. So the first thing we want to uh, be aware of is at what a cell is. So LiPo batteries are made up of cells and most batteries are going to be made up of a single cell. And a cell is a bit like a smaller battery, um, you know, lower level battery inside of the, uh, the battery casing that you have here. So as we said, most batteries are single cell batteries and they are known as 3.7 volt nominal charge batteries. We'll get to voltage in a moment but you can get batteries which have a higher voltage uh, because they have multiple cells in there. So you might see packs that have 2S or 3X written on, sorry, 3S written on them. And that stands for two series or three series. The S stands for series and it means there's multiple cells wired in series, which of course the voltages add together to give you a higher nominal voltage battery. So we're talking about voltage and we're saying nominal voltage. And that's because with voltages, you've got to be a bit careful with LiPo batteries. So we refer to a cell as 3.7 volts, but when you fully charge a LiPo, it's going to rest at about 4.2 volts maximum charge. And when it's fully discharged, it's going to be around three volts and you should never exceed those limitations. Otherwise, you can cause damage to your LiPo, potentially uh, cause it to overheat, swell or catch fire got to be safe when you're using LiPos. So a good quality charger won't allow it to charge over 4.2 volts. And likewise, if you've got some sort of uh, protection system in place, it can trigger when your cell voltage uh, gets to the 3.2, 3.1 mark, and you know you really need to recharge your battery. So that's voltage. And uh, you know, of course, if you had you know, a three cell battery, then the nominal voltage might be at 11.1 uh, volts, and it's going to be higher uh, when you uh, when it's fully charged and lower when it's depleted. Then the biggest thing that's going to impact your project is the battery capacity, and this is directly related to size. The bigger the battery, the more charge it can hold. And capacity is measured in a unit known as milliamp hours. So you've heard of milliamps perhaps, or amps. Milliamps um, is a subunit of amps, uh, which is the amount of energy flowing at a given point in time. And milliamp hours is the amount of charge that it can store before it is depleted. So what, is, what does milliamp hours mean? Well, take this guy. It's a 1000 milliamp hour LiPo battery. And that means that it can provide one amp or 1000 milliamps for one hour before it's depleted. It could provide 500 milliamps or half an amp for two hours before it's depleted and so on and so forth. And it could provide, uh, providing the, uh, the battery is able to deliver that much current, which we'll get to in a second, it could provide two amps for half an hour. So you can apply that to all of the different battery capacities there. And I put a formula in to calculate the time um, and the power that you can draw from the LiPo before it will be discharged down there. So take a look at that if you wanna work out exactly how much uh, you know, how much life your battery is going to give your project once you know the average current draw of your project. Now the discharge rating is particularly important both for uh, safety and to preserve uh, your LiPo. So the discharge rating obviously refers to the current that it can discharge at any given point in time. Now there's a special rating known as a C rating where C uh, is multiplied by the capacity of the battery and that gives you the maximum uh, discharge. So a battery may have a rating of one C, for example, so you would multiply one by your battery capacity and that is the maximum amount of current that it can discharge. So again, a 1000 milliamp hour battery uh, with a one C rating could discharge one amp continuously. If it had a two C rating, it would be two amps. Uh, this guy here, a beefy 6000 milliamp hour, if it had a 2C rating would be 12 amps, 1C, 6 amps. 
and so on and so forth. It's fairly straightforward. And on top of that, some batteries will also give you a boost or you know a burst uh, C rating where you can temporarily, for a short period of time, draw more current than the, the typical C rating. But for the most part, you want to stick within that C, uh, given C rating. Otherwise, you can cause uh, cause your battery to swell up, um, damage to it, uh, damage to your projects, as mentioned. And also, uh, bear in mind that the wires on some batteries may be thicker or thinner, and they're capable of carrying uh, less current. So this 1,000 milliamp hour battery might have thicker wires than a much smaller battery, which is going to limit the current. So on some battery pages, it says uh, restrict the discharge to one amp, despite the C rating, unless you want to replace the wiring harness, which I only recommend doing if you really know what you're doing. So that's the charge rating um, and the discharge, discharge rating, I should say, the charge rating um, is the exact same thing, but how, how much energy it can be charged with at any given point in time. It's fairly common sense, although charging um, at one amp is, is pretty recommended. Now, size is directly related to capacity. Um, the bigger the battery, the more energy it can hold, the more space it takes up. It's fairly common sense. And I've got a couple of different batteries here, which I recommend for all sorts of different projects, depending on how you're using them. You've got your really small uh, 120 milliamp hour battery, your 1000 milliamp hour battery, so stepping up almost 10 times the capacity, uh, but it's still nice and flat, which is good. Uh, then in between, you've got a cylindrical battery, and this is known as an 18650 cell. Um, they're designed to sort of look like a big AA size batteries, but they're actually LiPo batteries and work in the exact same way, but are ideal if you need something that's uh, you know, a bit narrower, but you don't need that flat form factor. And then again, 6000 milliamp hours, this guy's really chunky, so six times the capacity of the 1000 milliamp hour here, but uh, a bit thicker, and it does a really good job of powering it, you know, chunky projects if they need a lot of juice and give them a decent battery life or just make that project that you've got go forever without needing to be recharged. So that's a bit of an overview about all the specifications of LiPo batteries that you need to be aware of. And hopefully now you can go on and know what project it is that you wanna build and pick a battery that's going to best suit that project based on the voltage it needs, uh, how long it's going to last and the physical dimensions of the battery itself. If you've got any more questions, then let us know in the comments uh, below. Uh, get the conversation started and we'll see you next time, guys.